MakerBot's been making their own 3D printers here in New York since 2009, but at some point along the way, they decided, you know what? We could use a little more space. Flash forward to today, where we're coming to you from their brand new 50,000 foot factory here in Sunset Park, Brooklyn. Let's take a look. I invite you and welcome you to the MakerBot factory. When we designed the MakerBot Replicator 2, which is the machine that's being designed here, it was really designed so that it would be easier to put together than our previous machines, and um, it is, luckily. When we send MakerBots out to the world, we talk about that they're made with Brooklyn pride, and it says Brooklyn on, on them, and that's not intangible, it's real. But when people see that, they see that this is, some, this is a machine that's been made and there's care and attention and love given to it. We want to make it very loud and clear that this is the future of New York City's economy and also of education. The impact of these tools, of education in a box, is going to shape New York City for generations to come and, and we're just so thrilled to have you here. So congratulations everyone, you have a lot to be proud of. Uh, we're so thrilled to have you here. Thank you. Let me declare this day the make bot factory, Sunset Park, Grand opening celebration day in, remember this, the city of Brooklyn, USA. Congratulations. And we'll see how we go. Oh. So the process actually starts in what we call sub-assembly. So sub-assembly is where individual systems of the machine are put together and put into a bin which we call a kit. And a kit is essentially the unassembled version of the final machine. We put electronic components together, so this includes things like the extruder and then the uh, what we call the LCD interface. After it comes out of sub-assembly, it moves into final assembly. So final assembly is where the bots take their, their more familiar form and they actually turn into a, a machine. So in the testing area, that's where we do uh, life testing and we do abusive testing and increasing the reliability of our machine. So as we go in the future, it's like, do they print a million hours? Well, we want, to, we want them to print 10 million hours. Final inspection is where all the machines go. No machine escapes final inspection. This is a 100% verification that this machine is operating at an ideal state so that the customer gets a, a perfect out of the box experience. So what we do there is we do a print verification. So we, we give the machine a difficult print to make sure that all the little fine details are in order. And then if not, we make any final tweaks before it moves on to packaging. That's where the final uh, cosmetic pieces go on. So these are any sort of safety stickers, any sort of labels. What we put on, we put on facades. So this is where the branded facade goes on. And it actually makes the unit look a little bit more whole, like more polished, so you don't just get this naked machine. It actually, I mean, it, it turns at that point, it's fully a MakerBot and then we put it in a box. And we don't throw it, because they're too delicate to throw in a box. We generally place them inside of the boxes Fair and package enough. them up. Okay. And then, and then, <laughs> then they're on their way out, down, down into our, our warehouse and out the, the shipping door. So repair is made up of our elite assembly people. So they come, they come all the way through, they've been in inspection, and then they've moved on to repair. And there's just a huge base of knowledge inside of repair. The so, bot farm. But it's literally a factory inside of a factory, which is kind of like blows your mind a little bit there. Um, <laughs> It's just full of people making things, which is incredible. Hey, we just finished our tour of the new MakerBot factory here in Brooklyn, and look what we found, it's Brie Pettis. Hey, good, good to have you here. We just had a ribbon cutting. Welcome to the new MakerBot factory. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's a really great space. I gotta ask though, when did you guys sort of decide, hey, we need to move into a bigger area? You know, it's funny. When we started, we needed, we've gone through a couple spaces, and every time we're like, okay, let's double. And then of course, we come out with a new product and we sell more than double. So <laughs> it was like, okay, we tried that a couple times. Then finally, the last space we were in was 5,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. We've got 50,000 square feet here. So I was like, screw this doubling stuff. <laughs> Let's go 10x. Let's do this thing. I like that philosophy. And, you know, there's a little room where we are now, but when we leave, there'll be, you know, lines set up here to make more MakerBots. That's awesome. And so this entire space is dedicated to making Replicator 2s and Replicator 2Xs. Can you kind of give us a sense of how many you guys are able to put together in a day? Yeah, the number we talk about, we're, we're somewhere around 20,000 machines out in the wild right now. Cool. So that's a lot <laughs> in, in the 3D printing world. Probably the other interesting thing that's going to be made here is, uh, this comes out in the fall. It's going to, we'll, get, we'll give you the scoop on this one too. You're on, you said that on camera, I'm holding you to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
we're coming out with a MakerBot digitizer, and we pre-announced this at the at South by Southwest, but we've got a pretty big big announcement coming up this fall. Being able to scan things, mm -hmm. the MakerBot desktop 3D scanner, the digitizer, it's gonna just change the game. I mean, my two-year-old is gonna be able to make stuff out of Play-Doh, we're gonna stick it on the turntable. table, lasers will shoot at it, lasers, and <laughs> she, th that will make a digital, you, know, you just turn it on, it'll make a digital design, send it over to your computer. We'll make it on the MakerBot. This is gonna be her first manufacturing project at age two. Like, what's she gonna make when she's three? So let me, I'll, <laughs> let, me, let me qualify this next statement by saying I am not, I don't know anything about CAD, I don't know how to design my own products, but the digitizer sounds like the sort of thing that could potentially make 3D printing so much more accessible to people. What's your, what's your sense of that? Yeah, I mean, that's the whole idea. It's with the MakerBot digitizer, we want to make it's just so much more accessible, friendly, easy, easy, easy for people to jump in and start designing and making things. And you know, I think it's kind of like when, for musicians, when like four tracks came out. <laughs> I think it's kind of like that. It, it, it's a tool that will allow you to be creative, to sample, instead of sampling music, you know, you'll be able to actually make things out of clay, scan them, turn them into digital designs, and then tweak them or make mashups, do whatever you, you want with them, and then make 3D models on your MakerBot. And, yeah, and then print them out on your replicator too, yeah. right? Bam! <laughs> it's, you know, it's this thing, we're building out the MakerBot 3D ecosystem. So we've got MakerBot, we've got Thingiverse, Digitizer's coming soon, Ga game is on. <laughs>